This is Witchbase News for Friday the 9th of August 2024. I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous News this week. With just 3 titans left we now know when the attack on the titan Thor will begin, the hut and run speed records are tumbling like dominoes, the effects of the long awaited engineering rebalance are being felt in the game and more. If you enjoy our videos consider subscribing to the channel and remember to ding the little bell to make sure you see all our content and community posts and if you'd like to help support the channel links to our Patreon and everything else are in the description below. We now know the date that the assault on the next Thargoid Titan Thor is due to commence. It came down to a margin thinner than the deck on a Nat skateboard this week but that date is August the 15th ...that's next week as I speak these words. Attacks on the remaining 4 systems that Thor has control of are now well underway and when the tick turns over the server next Thargs day it will become completely vulnerable to attack. It was hoped that the attack might have started this week but Thor managed to hang on till the last and so the assault is delayed by one week. A fact I would imagine the attendees at this weeks Elite Dangerous Community Meet in the UK are likely quite grateful for as they'll now all still have a chance to get another star on their titan smashing decals and of course watch any explosions live if the titan ends up falling as quickly as the others have. To guarantee you're included ideally get your 2 million in combat bonds against the Titan Thor on Tuesday or Wednesday next week. Don't forget as part of the engineering rebalance that was deployed this week participation in the liberation of any Thargoid infected systems no matter what flavour of positive action you perform will now earn you G4 and G5 materials on a sliding scale once the system itself is liberated. And once Thor's worst day ever has completed there will be only 2 titans of the original 8 left threatening the bubble. We're so close now. The legendary run to Hutton Orbital that has for so long been almost guaranteed to take over an hour in Supercruise has, with the arrival of Supercruise Overcharge, seen its records begin to tumble of late. If you're unfamiliar with the Hutton run then brace yourself. Hutton Orbital is an orbital outpost in the Alpha Centauri system. Once you arrive in the system you have to travel to the outpost in Supercruise and Hutton Orbital is a whopping 6,784,404 light seconds from the entry point in the system. That's 0.22 of a light year. To put that into perspective it's about 11 weeks of travel at the speed of light. In order to get into the officially recorded charts for a run to Hutton you need to start the clock at the moment you enter the system and that timer only stops when you land at Hutton Orbital. There is a plugin for the Elite Dangerous Market Connector app called the Hutton Helper that will record the time for you and post it to the charts on the Hutton Truckers website. With the advent of Super Cruise Overcharge and with the assistance of a team of volunteers armed with refueling limpets strung out in a chain between the entry star and the outpost it became possible to finish the Hutton run in less than an hour. In a few rare cases it was even possible to get that time under half an hour. Now with the arrival of the Type 8 the race is on to get that record even lower. The newly arrived Type 8 freighter is the only ship so far that can make the entire run non-stop in supercruise overcharge with no refuelling stops necessary. At the time of recording as of Thursday the 8th of August Commander Epaphus has set a new officially recorded arrival to landing Hutton run record in a Type 8 freighter packed out with fuel tanks of 25 minutes and 10 seconds. Reckon you can beat it? Hutton is waiting for you. A new double headed community goal went live on Thursday this week and for the top 50% of contributors there's a free Crypsis yellow paint job for the crate mark 2 up for grabs. 
Both community goals are running out of the Tanner Settlement Coriolis Orbital Starport in the Polevnik system and both require deliveries but of very different types. One half is requesting commodity based deliveries in the form of animal monitors, auto fabricators and microcontrollers and the other half is after encoded material based deliveries in the shape of classified scan databanks, cracked industrial firmware and unexpected emission data. It'll be interesting to see how well supported the material half of the community goal is. We are wondering here if Frontier aren't just as interested in the results as well. Being of the encoded variety of material the needed mats for the goal can't be gathered easily en masse by using flak launchers at a surface POI or by simple collector limpet at the new engineering rebalanced poster child high grade emissions. They can be gathered by completing missions, scanning beacons in encoded emissions or NPC ships etc and we're wondering here if FDEV are perhaps using the CG as a research tool to see where and what methods commanders will naturally gravitate toward to obtain the slightly more challenging mats following the engineering rebalance that launched this week. It could of course just be a coincidence and I'm just staring at shadows and waiting for them to twitch. The goals both run until the 15th of August unless they manage to top out before. As I've just mentioned it likely can't have escaped your notice this week that the Frontier monikered Type 8 update arrived in the game on Wednesday. We've produced a number of information videos for the update a playlist of which you can see linked on screen now but we also figured a more executive top level overview of what has to be one of the most significant updates in the 10 plus year history of Elite Dangerous might be useful for the more time poor commanders in the community. As well as ushering in the titular Type 8 into early access and adding some new pre-built ship options to the store the update also released the Python Mark II from early access and so in case you missed it in all the noise that first addition to Odyssey's now growing stable of Super Cruise Overcharge enabled next generation ships is now available completely for free using regular old fashioned in game space credits. The Type 8 is first and foremost a very fast very nimble medium sized freighter that leans hard into Lacon's industrial functional stylings. Without a shield it'll give you 406 units of cargo or with a class 4 shield you'll still get a very respectable 390 for that medium pad landing capability. It has 5 small and 1 medium hardpoint. And it's fair to say it's not too interested in sticking around for a fight but as a secondary role it is a very competent Swiss army knife style mining ship that can house all the tools necessary to take apart an asteroid in whatever fashion you choose. If you're looking to build yourself a Type 8 immediately or are curious to start making plans for when it enters the game for free on November the 7th then the ship is already updated and ready to go on the excellent Elite Dangerous Shipyard website which you'll find linked below this video. We do think it likely that the Type 8 will have an increasingly important role as the community gets deeper into the next generation of power play that is arriving next month and those T8s will likely be hotly pursued by equally speedy and equally capable wings of Python Mark IIs. Interesting times ahead. Whilst not grabbing the title of the update the engineering rebalance is, for a lot of commanders at least, the more significant portion of the Type 8 update. The very broad overview of changes comes down to the following. The changes affect both ship and on foot engineering. Across the board material gathering is much easier and the material costs of engineering whether it be ship modules or on foot equipment are significantly lower. The material cost changes are handled in two different ways. On foot engineering has flat out lower costs across the board both for equipment upgrades and for modifications. Ship based engineering has had the random roll element completely removed and there is now a flat rate for all engineering upgrades which decreases with the increase in reputation you have with a given engineer. 
In both cases, both ship and on foot, it's difficult to overstate the cost reductions this has introduced. When it comes to material gathering the changes are again different for the two disciplines. On foot there is no difference in the amount of materials that you can gather from looting a settlement. It is however in mission rewards that you will see a significant increase in the numbers and variety of materials being rewarded. For starships the amount of available pickups has been increased at the Jameson crash site and at crashed anacondas However it's in two key other areas that the map gathering process has been improved more significantly. Firstly the quantity and variety of materials available as mission rewards from starport mission boards has increased significantly. Those changes include a wide variety of raw materials now being available and encoded materials in much greater quantities. Secondly the amount of manufactured materials that can be gathered from the various flavours of high grade emission has gone through the roof. In the last couple of days since the update dropped I've been able to fill up on specific G5 manufactured mats from dropping into just one high grade emission and then trade those G5s down to the lower grades and then easily rinse and repeat with no need for relogging. I'll say that again because I know it sounds mad if you've not experienced it. You can drop into a single HGE and fill up completely on a specific G5 material. I've done this multiple times with mats like pharmaceutical isolators as one example. Without it having been explicitly stated we think Frontier are likely trying to steer players much more towards doing missions and using the material traders to get whatever else they need. This would have added the side effect of creating more random spikes in faction and superpower influence which will act as a fuel for the engine driving the background simulation, likely making both BGS and power play a more dynamic environment than it currently is once that update launches next month. It's a tough balance for Frontier to find and I do wonder if we've not yet seen the end of some buffs, tweaks and nerfs as things continue to pan out. As things stand, certainly for me personally at least, I'm finding material gathering using the methods I've talked about here including much more rewarding missions altogether more enjoyable and importantly achievable. If you've been put off tackling engineering in whatever form before the update this week I'd urge you to take another run at it. It does, quite rightly, still require a degree of effort and legwork from the player but, really importantly, that effort and legwork is much more guaranteed to yield tangible and quite significant results. Greater results in fact than have ever been achievable at any time in Elite's past. Access to engineering is now much more attainable for many many more players and that has to be a good thing for the game. Will you be attempting a Hutton speed run? Have you purchased yourself a Python Mark II? And how have you found the engineering rebalance changes so far? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then, 07 Commanders, follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.